Hello, in this video we will discuss the producer-consumer synchronization problem. In some sources uh, this problem is also called the bounded buffer problem. So far we have only discussed the critical section problem. But this problem is only one of many well-known synchronization problems. When programming you can come across other synchronization scenarios. Other synchronization problems include the dining philosopher's problem, the cigarette smoker's problem, the reader's writer's problem and sleeping barber problem. All of these problems are usually discussed in real life metaphors, but each one describes a parallel programming scenario that requires a special technique to synchronize processes or threads. So don't be surprised when we discuss philosophers, readers or barbers, all of them are just convenient real-life allegories for processes and threads that use shared resources. And programmers use the solutions to these synchronization problems when creating programs. In its simplest form, the producer-consumer problem looks like this. The producer produces items, one by one, and places them in a buffer that can hold a limited predetermined number of items. The consumer takes items from this buffer one by one and consumes them. In a more complex version of this problem there could be multiple producers and multiple consumers, but we will stick with the initial simple version. As we said before, both the producer and consumer are in fact the processes or threads. For example, the producer thread generates some frames or web pages and the consumer thread shows them on screen or sends them via a network. The buffer that they use to exchange these data items is in fact the shared memory that can hold a certain number of items. We must arrange the producer in such a way that it waits for an empty space in the buffer if the buffer is full. On the other hand, if the buffer is empty and there is nothing to consume, the consumer should wait. There are different ways to solve this problem. One of the classic ways to do so is by using a couple of semaphores. If you are not quite sure how semaphores work, you can refresh this material in our semaphores video. On the screen you can see the solution for the producer and consumer processes. Both processes can see, first of all, a shared buffer of a fixed size. The buffer on our illustration is big enough to store up to four items. Also, both processes can see the semaphore full and the semaphore empty. The semaphore full shows the number of items in the buffer. And in the beginning it is initialized to zero, because there are no items yet. The semaphore empty shows the number of empty spaces in the buffer. And in the beginning all four spaces are free. So we initialize this semaphore to 4. Let's take a look at the producer first. It produces an item and then it wants to place it in the buffer. It can place this new item in the buffer only if there is at least one empty space. As we have just said, the number of empty buffer spaces is indicated by the value of the empty semaphore. So the producer waits for the semaphore empty. If empty is greater than zero, it means that there is a place for the new item. It allows the producer to proceed and place the new item in the buffer. By doing so, the producer decreases the number of empty spaces in the buffer by one. And that is already taken care of, because the wait function automatically decreases the value of semaphore by one. On the other hand, if the producer waits for the semaphore empty and empty equals zero, that means that there is no place in the buffer for the new item. As you will remember, if a process or thread waits for a semaphore that is zero or less, they are placed in an inactive waiting state. That is just what we need here. If empty equals zero, the producer will just enter a waiting state and resume only when the consumer signals empty, showing that an empty space has appeared in the buffer. Okay. Now, what should the producer do after it places the new item in the buffer? Because placing the new item not only decreases the number of empty spaces in the buffer, but also increases the number of items there, the producer must increase the value of the semaphore full. 
This can be done by signaling the semaphore full. Signaling full does one more important thing. If the buffer is empty and the consumer is waiting for an item to appear, signaling full will wake the consumer up when the new item appears in the buffer. Once again, the producer makes a new item. Then it checks the availability of an empty space in the buffer. If there is no empty space, the producer waits for one. When an empty space is available, the producer decreases the number of empty spaces by one and proceeds to place the new item in the buffer. Once the item is in the buffer, the producer increases the count of items in the buffer and wakes up the consumer in case the consumer is waiting for a new item to become available. The consumer functions in a similar way, but it waits and signals different semaphores. See? Before taking an item from the buffer, the consumer waits for the semaphore full. It will put the consumer in the inactive waiting state if full is zero and there are no items to take. But if some items are in the buffer, the wait command decreases their number by one. And this is right, because the consumer will take one item from the buffer. Once the consumer takes one item from the buffer, it must increase the number of empty spaces in the buffer and wake the producer up if it is waiting for an empty space to appear. Both of these things can be done with a single signal empty command. That's it. That's one way to solve the producer-consumer problem. So, the producer-consumer problem says that a producer produces items one by one and places them in a buffer, and the consumer takes items from the buffer one by one. We must arrange both the producer and the consumer in such a way that if the buffer is full, the producer doesn't try to place more items in it, but just waits for an empty space to appear. If the buffer is empty, the consumer doesn't try to take an item from it, but just waits for a new item to appear. We showed how to solve the producer-consumer problem by using two semaphores. That's it. Thank you for being with us.